guys. Hope you're doing great. Our today's question is the coin change problem. It's a very standard and a very classic problem on dynamic programming and it's a must know if you're preparing for coding interviews. So the question says you're given coins of different denominations and a total amount of money amount, right? Write a function to compute the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. If that amount of money cannot be made up by any combination of the coins, return minus one. So for example, if you're given coins one, two, and five, and infinite supply of these three coins, right? So you have infinite number of ones, twos, and fives, and the amount that you need to build is one, right? Uh, sorry, 11. So then what is the least number of coins with which you can build the amount 11, right? So that would be two fives and one one, right? Which gives us an answer three. Similarly, if the amount is three and the only coin given to you is two, then you cannot make three out of two, right? Uh, any, any given number of coins of two, but three cannot be made. So that is why the answer is minus one. You may assume that you have an infinite number of each kind of coin. Okay. So um, this is an unsorted array to go by the data structure and these are the techniques that we generally use to solve such a question. So please have a look, think about it and come back. All right, so this is a clear example of dynamic programming because this is not essentially giving us any clues about any of the other approaches. And yeah, it's a very classic example of dynamic programming. So you once you practice it, you'd see this occurring in a lot of interviews. So yeah, it's, it, it's clearly dynamic programming that we need to apply here. So the concept that we will be going for is that we'll create a DP array of the size amount plus one, okay? Why is that? Is because for each number in the amount, right? So if the amount is 11, then for 1, 2, 3, 4, up till 11, for each value, we need to find the minimum number of coins that are required to build that value. And then we will use those pre-calculated results to derive the next value and then this to derive the next value and so on until we reach the value amount, right? Because here the amount is not like a zero based value, it's 11, then it's 11. And to denote that in an array, we need to take an array of the size 12, right? So that it is 0 to um, 11, right? So uh, that is the reason we have to take that um, size of the array. And how it will work is that we'll traverse through each coin. So let's say that the amount that we need is 4. Um, I've kept it 4 for the sake of brevity and to be able to explain it to you here. So let's say the amount that we need to build is four and the coins that are given are same, one, two, and five, right? So what we'll do is that we'll create an array of the size five, that is four plus one, right? And in the first iteration, um, where we'll be iterating coins, we'll have the coin value as one, right? So uh, assume an example where you have to find a value so the amount is suppose 100, okay? And the coin given is 50, right? So you don't want to traverse through 1 to 49 to only identify that I never had a coin lesser than 50, right? That is why once we get this value of coin, we will directly start from the value of that coin, right? So in the amount, we know that the, we cannot do anything for values that are lesser than this, right? We cannot create them. And that is why we'll just jump to DP of one in this case. Okay. So we will derive these values. Okay. So what we essentially need to do here is that we would have to find out that if the current value of DP is that less because we want to know the fewest number of points, or if I use this value, right? So let's say this is DP of one, minus one, right? Because the value of the coin is one. So that plus one, because we're using this coin, right? So 
if if i use this coin then i get to a value and i know that dp of that value is the minimum number of coins required to build that value plus plus 1 because i am using this coin one coin of one to get that right so is that lesser or which or the value that i already have is lesser and i we just update that in the dp array and then we get our answer so let's get started with writing the code and i think it will get better fine so some base conditions if the amount is equals to 0 return 0 right and and we can also say that if the coins uh, dot length sorry sorry equals to 0 then also return a 0 right okay now let's create the dp array equals to new mm, we have to keep it amount plus 1 right okay so after that um dp of 0 is 0 because we are not actually we don't have to like build zero amount right and that if we ever had to it will take zero coins so it's just zero and then we start our for loop okay so as i was saying we'll traverse through all the coins right less than coins dot length right i plus plus okay and then we will start from the value of the coin till amount okay so just like here we will start from 1 till the amount okay so we we'll take another variable and it will start from coins of i so whatever coin we are currently iterating over we start from the value of that coin go till amount one by one right okay so now the dp of j okay we need to update that with the minimum of dp of j because it is possible that you were iterating some other coin and you already are using the least possible number of coins right so you don't want to update this value then otherwise oh yeah and yeah another thing is that we also need to fill up the array with a value which is bigger so we'll just we can just fill up with anything like integer dot max value or just an amount plus 1 because we're never going to use that many number of coins right and this needs to go after this sorry because this will fill up all the values and we want 0 to be 0 because that's not right right okay so yeah this and then dp of j minus the coins of i right that's the current coin in consideration plus 1 okay yeah and then once this all is done what we have to return is so it is possible that we were not able to have any such combination right where we could derive the value so we just have to check that if dp of amount if it's equal to amount plus 1 because we filled it with that value initially if that's the case then we have to return minus 1 because that's what it says we have to return minus 1 if you are not able to find a combination otherwise we have to return the value okay yeah so so in this case when we'll have 5 for example uh, since the value 5 so we don't have any index with uh in in the dp which is five value so we cannot use a coin that is so high that it is more than the amount right so uh, in those cases it will not iterate okay let's see if this runs
So the time complexity for this is quite interesting. Um, so since we are for each coin, right, for each given coin, we are traversing through the entire amount. Um, it's, it's like and uh, iterating through the entire uh, array which has uh, which is of the size of the amount right so that's why the time complexity would be n where n is the number of coins into the amount right which is the amount okay just i'm really sorry guys mm, it should Okay, connect. Yeah, so that would be the time complexity uh, O of n into amount where n is the number of given coins li like the distinct types of coins and uh, the space complexity would be O of amount, right? Because we're using a DP array which is of the size amount plus one. So in terms of the complexity, we would call it O of plus one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's submit. Okay. So, hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. Keep coding in DK, guys.